So good evening all. Uh, good to see you. Energy finance uh, class gathering for the last session. Uh, this is a small presentation. I thought of uh, taking more inputs from the class and Professor Parker. That's the idea. So uh, Exxon case was quite interesting. The being a finance guy, the valuations, uh, uh, swap ratios, uh, cash purchase, equity swaps, and so on. They are quite exciting to me always. So Exxon, uh, it was in the news because uh, many analysts felt when uh, uh, it was in the it was. Uh, in the market players' uh, minds in the month of April or first week or second week, uh, till the time there was no movement in the stock prices of these two companies, Exxon and Pioneer. But in the first week of uh, April, the slowly people started uh, uh, discounting this information that uh, some, many people said that it was a rumor, but it was uh, uh, finalized in the month of October till then it was a rumor and the prices were volatile uh, in that period. So I think you all are aware, but a bit of information on this. Exxon is the one of the leading oil producers uh, uh, and refiners, uh, the greatest amount of distribution at a full price retail. Um, as Professor Parker was saying, they don't care about hedging. They never care. Just, they just uh, bring out the product and sell it out, and they ensure that the product is uh, ready to sell. That is the business model they always had. So they are instantaneous in uh, dealing with oil. The, the acquisition news, it came first in the market in the so second week of April uh, this year. And it was finalized on 8th of October uh, by the respective company's executives. And the offer deal value was confirmed at uh, close to 60 billion, exactly $59.5 billion worth. And uh, these calculations made the offer as 22% uh, premium uh, compared to Pioneer's market capitalization around 49 billions in the market. Uh, uh, capitalization is all about the stock market price uh, times the uh, number of shares issued. Uh, this is 7.5 times of Pioneer's returns to uh, shareholders. So the question is, there were a lot of debates on this. Is this a good deal or not? In the industry's point of view and prices point of view, because uh, there are crazy things happening. So in industry point of view, small players love to be sold because uh, everyone we are talking about uh, um, uh, carbon footprints and so on. So electric vehicles coming into the picture and alternate energy sources like wind projects and coming in. So maybe in, in the few decades, oil and uh, natural gas industry is a big question mark for many analysts. So at this time, for $60 billion, Exxon wanted to buy Pioneer. So it, this was a, a big surprise to many analysts. So big, for big players' point of view, to look to bulk up, they look forward to bulk up, diversify, cut costs from merger synergies, uh, uh, including uh, Exxon. So that, that, that uh, supports uh, in industry point of view. And in prices uh, point of view, oil and gas prices have remained relatively strong on NYMEX, which is the result of current uh, supply and demand imbalances uh, globally, including the war, Ukraine war. And Brent crude prices started uh, rising, and it reached a high of uh, $90.89 on uh, the month of October on 13th. Same is the case with natural gas. It rose to 3.382 on uh, uh, 10th October in the same month. Uh, which is the high. So looking at this, uh, it is a good idea to acquire as the oil and gas prices are relatively strong and gives, leaves the scope for uh, future hike or volatility in the coming months or years. So wh what's the reason for the excellent timing right now? Given the industry setting, which I explained in the previous slide, the current scenario in national and global markets where oil industry have a big threat of uh, alternative sources, seen through the success of uh, EVs and alternative sources to oil and gas, like uh, uh, wind energy products I was mentioning. Then uh, what we can look at is uh, the synergies uh, that the post-deal valuation gives to both uh, Exxon, uh, including uh, Pioneer, after the merger. So Exxon is the largest uh, um, uh, um, this makes the uh, uh, largest uh, 
and biggest player in the region leaving uh, occidental petroleum behind and this uh, this would help uh, exxon mobil uh, uh, boost its global inventory that is a strategical move by exxon and build a dominant position in the permian basin oil then uh, uh, exxon is uh, uh, not into hedging risk management uh, pr price risk management of oil and natural gases and where, where uh, uh, pioneer is good in that so th th that is a good synergy uh, uh, for exxon then in uh, pioneer's point of view it has a uh, deep low cost inventory in which is the third largest after chevron and uh, conco philip and uh, I think looking at all these things, Exxon may be interested in uh, investing in the Permian Basin, which it was uh, looking uh, into it earlier years also. But there is still a significant portion of the Permian uh, that remains unexplored, in spite of some negativity on uh, those uh, regions. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how, which way they are located. Uh, this is the uh, pioneers uh, contiguous high quality acreage enhances the assets uh, where it is located. Exxon Mobil's uh, Permian position. This is in Deliver Basin and uh, uh, Midland Basin. I got it in, uh, I think, Pioneer website itself. Then uh, in financials, it is said that uh, uh, Exxon is uh, overvalued, it has a premium. And uh, this um, deal, uh, which, ha which is set to be 20% premium, uh, this deal will offset uh, where uh, Exxon had a premium in the market. That is not a big loss to market valuation or capitalization of uh, Exxon. And uh, it's also possible for Exxon to purchase Pioneer for cash. Uh, as ca uh, Pioneer currently has a 51 billion uh, market cap and Exxon earned 55.7 billion uh, in net income, so it's not a big deal for Exxon. So the premium is also justified in terms of uh, operational issues, financial and uh, risk areas. In the operational areas, uh, it had uh, uh, huge assets of uh, 850,000 net acres of land and industry-led acreage quality, Pioneer. Then inventory, I think I already mentioned in the uh, about the Permian Shale where uh, uh, Pioneer is strong in. Then uh, Pioneer was uh, uh, known for its efficiency. The oil-weighted production uh, generates strong margins uh, through high-realized uh, pricing. Then uh, scale, uh, scaling up the operation is an opportunity for uh, uh, Exxon through um, uh, Pioneer's uh, presence. Then in terms of supply chain, uh, Pioneer sets high expectations for employees and contractors to perform their jobs in a safe manner and maintain industry leading, industry leading sustainable development and uh, environmental stewardship uh, efforts. So these are the synergies or advantages Exxon may get uh, through this acquisition, which are operational dimensions. Then financially, uh, it is known for stable and growing uh, base dividends with the flexibility in variable dividends and it had a share repurchase to an amount of 7.9 billion in uh, uh, 2022. I think in one of the sessions uh, of when we are talking about Pioneer, the cash position has come down and stock repurchase was, could be the reason uh, for Pioneer. Then uh, the returns, uh, uh, apart from 2020 financial year, the cumulative total returns from 17 to 22 were growing and at par with the oil and natural gas industry uh, reflected through the indices, that is uh, S&P, ONG, NP index. Then the debt has come down, interest has come down, debt services have come down. Then it, it, this brings a lot of flexibility because of decreasing the debt and interest rates. It brings a lot of flexibility financially. That's the greatest advantage. Then uh, I think uh, uh, Pioneer is the master of uh, risk management. It hedges a lot. It is known for hedging. So that is the greatest advantage for uh, uh, Exxon, Exxon Mobil. Some negativities on this. 
it may become riskier in terms of the prices and uh, regional players uh, perform i think that is not in the hands of either pioneer or exxon it is led to the market with the global uh, developments there is a huge downside risk of the oil and natural gas prices uh, fall further in the coming years that is a prediction expectation and it is reported that late uh, late last year and into this year various shale play, uh, players have reported lower efficiency in the permian uh, uh, with many producers missing uh, production targets this may hit exxon if it happens with pioneer 2 as a shale player in the coming years or quarters and uh, i just uh, did a comparative analysis of the stock prices uh, with when there was no news how was the stock price before the rumor or the expectations how were the stock price and when the deal was announced in the month of october how was the stock price and how much is the current price so i think uh, uh, i think if you check the prices there was no uh, uh, big deviation from the stock prices uh, before the deal was announced and uh, when the deal got closed and everything got settled you can see exxon was 104 Point five nine, which was the lowest uh, in the last week of uh, March, and its current price is, uh, is also around one hundred four. Then Pioneer price is around twenty two hundred thirty six. It is the almost the same uh, right now. So in between, the, it went to a high of two thirty seven, two fifty one when the deal got confirmed, and uh, before the deal got confirmed, Exxon price has gone up to one hundred and nineteen. so i conclude that uh, with the absence of corporate culture conflicts between exxon and pioneer uh, which happens with any kind of acquisition deals in mergers or acquisitions and with the uh, other uh, internal aspect of operational financial and human resources dimensions the deal is good if all the synergies and strategies pay off as discussed uh, in the previous slides it's all about the market regulations and uh, global uncertainties to decide the success or failure of this acquisition which are beyond the control of uh, exxon so let's wish good for exxon that's all we can do right now <laughs> so that's, that's great i i think that one of the things you touched on that i think is really going to help them in this first of all you were right the prices have gone down on oil and exxon is extraordinarily oily So you saw their stock price is back down to 103 or whatever, which I think is is a pretty good point. The one thing that will help Pioneer a lot is in that vertical integration, Exxon is going to be able to help them sell their gas better. So even if they don't hedge, they're just going to get a better price. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of it, I think, is there are a ton of synergies that Exxon brings with being a worldwide conglomerate that you brought out. Um, you know, and I think it's there. But one thing you got to be careful. We got to be careful of, right? Is you know, we talked about Pioneer at six something, uh, you know, natural gas. Then last year it was like three dollars and thirty something, and now I think today we talked about it at two dollars and you know seventy five or whatever. You know, but because Exxon is such a a behemoth. Let's say they can afford to be a little bit patient, right? They don't have to go. Pioneer had to keep producing all the time. They had to keep spending on capex, keep going. Exxon can say, "Hey, we're making a lot of money in our oil. Let's sit here and wait a little bit on the natural gas. We don't have to. We don't have. We don't have to do this. We're a more diversified company, right? And so, the one thing I think that both of you pointed out was." Their production levels kept going up and up and up. Yeah. Well, Exxon might make the oil stuff keep going up and put the brakes a little bit on the natural gas, and that would be something that would be uh, optimal. Great job. Thank you. I'm Thank sorry. you. <laughs>